Hi, welcome back. This is Scott from Rebel Driver's Garage. Today I'm going to do a short video on how to recurve an MSD ready to run distributor. Um, it actually works for some of their other distributors as well. This one is a particular one, is an 8360 for a small block Chevy and big block Chevy. Uh, this is a ready to run. And uh, as you can see there, and I'm recurving it for what I'm doing for my 500 horsepower and actually aspirated small block 400 that I got from Blueprint Engines. And to make it run a little better for this engine, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. It's super easy to do if you ever thought you could do it. These things come curved basically for stock engines out of the box, which is what MSD does. And I'll show you how to do it. It's super simple. It takes about 15 minutes. Um, and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. If you're fast, you can probably do it faster. Um, um, but let me, let me show you what we're doing. Follow along, and uh, it's super simple and make your car run a lot better if you're running a big camshaft, especially if you're running a camshaft that's got over 240 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths. These things, uh, this way allows you to run more initial timing and less mechanical advanced timing, which is what I'm doing, and get the timing to come in fully faster. This is what we're doing on this. It shows you how to do it. Um, follow along, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, uh, I'm going to be putting in this um, uh, 8360 distri uh, MSD distributor. This is their ready to run, uh, ready to run electronic distributor. You can run it with a box or without a box, but it will work without a box, which some of their distributors do not. This is um, this one has a black cap on it. I got this one off eBay. It was never installed, as you can see. The cap looks practically brand new. And what I'm going to be doing is recurving it. Now, recurving it, there's two things to do on a recurve. There is the the, the advanced springs. This is uh, this determines how fast the curve, um, the, the, the advances out to the curve. So how what RPM it full, is fully advanced. So... With the factory springs, which it says right here on the instruction sheet, from the factory, it doesn't get to full advance till 4,000 RPM. Well, on a, f a performance engine, that's that's a little bit slow. That's way slow. Um, on a, a street, street performance engine, I like it about 3,000 RPM. So what we're going to do is we're going to change those. The other thing it does is it advances the timing over 22 degrees. 22 degrees um, mechanical. So as the event, as these, as you, as you, the engine revs up, these weights come out like that. Okay, and there, uh, and the timing advances mechanically. You already have the initial advance. Okay, and this is the mechanical advance. All right, this is not electronic. So they have what they know, what is known as an advanced stop bushing. And inside, on the distributor, see that little nut there? Oops, it's going up a little. That nut holds a bushing inside the advanced stop plate. And the size of the bushing determines how many degrees it allows the, 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 the ignition to advance mechanically. Okay. 22 degrees is fine I guess if you're playing around with a mostly stock engine on a engine with a big camshaft that likes that's more happy with more initial timing like an engine like that it's gonna be happier because it's got a lot of overlap in the camshaft lots of duration and it's gonna be happier with more timing at, at, at idle but you still have to have the same amount of total advance and your total advance is initial timing plus the mechanical timing inside the distributor okay your your mechanical advance you add those two together say 18 and 18 and you get 36 the vacuum advance is not connected when you don't do timing so it's not included in this so say you want to keep you you're you have an engine that has 
a lot a big camshaft with a lot of duration but it's it's happiest and it only needs 36 degrees of timing well if you run the original stock factory 22 degree advanced stop bushing in this that comes in the distributor 22 degrees from 36 means you only allow 14 degrees in advance and your engine may not be too happy with that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the bushing to a black one and then I'm going to use the silver and light spring light blue spring one silver one light blue this with um, this allows advanced timing to uh, come in quicker. Actually, what I'm going to do is I want it to come in at 3,000 RPM. Oh, actually, there we go. So what I'm going to do, I want it to come in quicker. So I'm going to use the black bushing, which only limits the mechanical advance to... 18 degrees so I can run 18 degrees initial advance plus 18 degrees mechanical advance and my my total advance is still going to be 36 the engine is going to be a lot happier than this and then I'm going to use the silver and light spring and that usually means that they're going to come in right around 3000 rpm it's going to be fully advanced somewhere maybe 2800 and that way the engine's going to it's going to be fully advanced and it's going to be a lot snappier off the line instead of really sluggish and why is it taking so long to to get up if you ha if you buy a high horsepower engine and you're wondering why it's really sluggish to move you think it doesn't make as much power as your stock engine a lot of it could be in the timing you could lose if you don't have the timing set up you can lose over 100 horsepower and it's been proven like on David Freiberger's uh, show on on Motor Trend on Demand um, you can lose 100 horsepower on a small block Chevy with just running, having your timing off. So you, and that's, that's a lot of power. And, and it's a lot of power inside the timing. And in, in, in just the, how you would curve your distributor and screw the engines more happy. So this is how I'm going to do it. You only need a few tools to do this. I've already got used the uh, Phillips head, which is just to get the cap and the rotor off. Okay. You need a 9 millimeter. Um, wrench for that little nut uh, why that's nine millimeter I'll never know okay uh, a pick uh, a pick here that's it like this that's to get the springs off with and hopefully not have them shoot across the room and then um, uh, needle nose pliers if you've got big fat fingers and you don't think you can get your hands in there needle nose pliers are going to come in handy I don't I have pretty small skinny fingers. I don't have sausage fingers, um, so that might be coming handy. The other thing that might come in handy is a little uh, magnet, and this helps to get the bushing out of there. The bushing can, to get the bushing out of there. Okay, that nut is stainless, so is the washer. So this magnetic thing will be useless for that, but you can get the bushing out with it. Okay, the first thing I always do is I do the bushing. So. Here is the kit that comes with the distributor, right? It has screws for different caps. You can put these kind of things on there, caps. It has a gasket. This is, uh, you can take your vacuum advance out and put this thing in here and not have vacuum advance, um, which if you don't hook up your vacuum advance to anything, it's not going to advance anyways. I don't know why people think this is necessary, but, and then a gasket and and then the springs in the your springs different size springs and your different um your other sized uh advanced stop bushings that's what they look like these little purple green and all these other colors we're gonna use the black one so hang on while i get everything out okay make sure you get the right one because there's a purple one and then there's a black one and I'm trying to show you under the light there we go see the purple one and the black one they're different there's slightly different diameters in them, and and believe me or not, these little steel little bushings make the big difference in how you um how much timing you have. So we're gonna use the black one. First thing we're gonna do is take that nut out. So 
hold the grip. It's pretty tight, so you might want to have a good grip on. I use the, I hold on to the distributor gear. Oh my goodness, they put that one on with a impact wrench. Uh, let me grab my glove. Okay, I got it loose here. So. Oops, I'm tightening it. Dingle dork. Lefty loosey righty tighty. I would suggest doing this somewhere like on a bench. Somewhere where you're not likely to lose this if it falls off. Like that. <laughs> See how it fell off? Okay, so the bushing is in there, and an easy way to get the bushing out is just use a magnet, okay, like that, and then put the new one in. Now, if you have skinny fingers like me, you can do this with like this sometimes that and get it seated up in there sometimes you gotta uh, uh, adjust the vance plate you know kind of open the springs and weights a little bit to get it to go it takes some of the tension off of it and then you put your little teeny washer on let's say if you got big fat fingers this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge oops Sometimes it just you just take a little like that, and just put that on like so, and then getting the nut started. And it's a, um, what do they call it, a locking nut or a pinch nut or something like that. So, there you go. Nice and tight. Now, we're going to change out the springs and weights. Hang on a second while I move, adjust everything. Okay, um, hopefully you can see this. So what I do is I put my thumb over one end and then I pry off the other. Try not to stab your thumb with your pick here. And the reason why I have my thumb over the other end is when it pops off, it can it can shoot across the room. There's a bit of a I haven't done this in a while, so it's a bit of a Try to keep it in the screen here. There we go. Do not lose that little bushing. That I do one at a time. So what do I do with my springs? Okay. 
Okay, put that on that. Put your thin finger over this the one end here in case it come it doesn't shoot across the room if you and lose it. Just like so. See? I turned around. I, I I do one that's a little farther, uh, what whatever, just farther from me. It makes it a little easier for me. Whatever works for you works for you. There we go. And then we put the little blue one on this end. It's okay to mix and match. You don't have to have the same spring on both sides, not on these. Okay, this is um, the blue ones. I, I like to open them up just a tiny bit on one end. Like that. Not a lot, but just a little. It makes it easier to get it over this post. I don't know why it's so tight to get over that post, but it's uh, it just requires patience and not stabbing yourself with a sharp object. There you go. See? Hold on. Now your distributor is recurved and you're ready to set it in. You just put the cap and rotor back on. Easy peasy.